One of the biggest problems we can have in watercolor is when our painting feels disjointed. It's easy to do if you're painting a lot of little pieces around the scene and not thinking about the painting as a whole. So today I'm gonna talk about how to unify the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. I had a viewer make a comment recently saying, when are we gonna see you play those drums? I may be a little bit rusty, but I'll see if I can sneak a few drum beats in today's video as well. We've talked about the foreground, middle ground, and background in other videos, and what the role of each area of those should play in our painting. So you can check out that video if you haven't seen that one yet. But what we don't want to create is three separate areas in our painting. We wanna find interesting and unique ways to make these sections of the painting interact with each other and interlock with each other. So let's talk about ways to unify our scene and find connections between the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. Tip number one, use verticals. Verticals are great tools to lead our viewer's eye around the painting. I've heard Joseph Zbukvich talk about creating Velcro, creating overlaps, ways to interlock those different areas of our painting to help them feel more connected. In some of Joseph's paintings, when he paints a landscape, he uses smoke to do this. So he might have a building or some type of farm in the distance, and you'll often see smoke coming out of the chimney, not only as a beautiful atmospheric effect, but what it's doing is creating this connection between the middle ground and the background of your painting. The next time you create your composition, think about verticals in your scene. This could be power poles, signs, buildings, trees, any object that's vertical that can be a link between the foreground, middle ground area and the background of your painting. So find ways to build these verticals into your scene and create more connectivity in your painting. So tip number two is use directional lines in your painting. Now these are also great lead-ins for the viewer and I often create directional lines if I have a road that's leading into the scene. If I have a wash that's still a little damp, I can take my palette knife and I can scrape in some very precise directional lines that will guide the viewer into the scene. You can do the same thing with power lines in your scene and other lines that can move your viewer's eye and create connectivity within your scene. This isn't limited to street scenes or cityscapes. You can also do this with landscapes. You can use texture to move the viewer's eye into the scene and create connectivity between your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. So number three is the most important tip in creating connectivity and coherence in your scene. And that is finding connections within each wash of your painting. So you could say that the greatest quality of watercolor is its connectivity. Our ability to let pigment mix on the paper can create a beautiful sense of unity and connectivity in our scenes. So we wanna think about this in the very first wash of our painting. So this is the only time in the painting where you have really loose washes flowing together and mingling on the paper. So we need to take advantage of painting wet into wet, allowing the colors of each object around the scene mix together on the paper. That's how we can find connectivity in the first wash, is being more open to letting those colors merge and blend together on the paper. Now this is also very important when it comes to our second wash, creating a large middle value shape. This is not easy. This is the most difficult part of the painting because we're trying to find connections in our shapes. And we're also thinking about values and about edges and color mixing all at the same time. But this middle value wash is where we can create the most connections in our painting. When I say find connections, what I mean is paint a shape. If you're painting a building with some cars, find connections within those shapes. So if you're painting a building and you come to the edge of that building and then there's a, a car, you wanna touch your brush to the wet edge 
and move right into the shape of that car. Maybe there's another car in the background. Move right into that car in the background. And you want to do this as you move around the scene. And you're finding connections within each one of these shapes. And what this is doing is creating one big unified shape versus many smaller pieces around the scene. So it's important to think about this when we're painting our large middle value connected shape. We can make these connections in this phase and we can always create separations between these shapes later on in the painting process when we get into painting the darks and the details of the scene. But we can't create that connectivity later on in our painting process. So that's why it's so important to think through these connections in the middle value shape of your scene. All right, let's recap these three tips for creating connections and creating a unified painting. Number one, use verticals throughout your scene to connect the foreground, middle ground, and the background. Number two, use directional lines. Not only can we guide the viewer into our scene, but we can connect different areas of our paintings as well. And number three, the most important one, find connections within each wash of your painting. So let colors flow together in your first wash, find a large connected middle value shape, and paint it all as one big shape instead of little separate pieces, and then try to find connections when you paint your darks as well. If we can use these three tips, we can create more cohesive, more unified paintings that feel more natural and are more compelling. Watercolor is not a very forgiving medium. It's hard to correct. Having a plan as we go into our painting is crucial. So that's why I made this free video lesson, Seven Secrets to Fresh, powerful paintings. Many students have already watched this video lesson and are seeing great results and I know that it can help you out as well. So take a look at this free lesson. All you have to do is follow the link down below in the description and learn how to paint more fresh and powerful watercolor paintings. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What are some watercolor tutorials that you would like me to make? If you have any suggestions, leave them in a comment below this video. So thank you once again for spending time with me here today. I really appreciate it. And I know there are so many places and ways that you can learn about watercolor. And I appreciate you spending some time here with me today. So keep on working at it. Keep learning and moving forward in your growth as an artist. And I will see you next time.